Let's take a look at the bomber that maybe shouldn't have been built, had a bizarre delivery method, found new life in another role, and set a world record which just might surprise you. The North American A-5 Vigilante was a carrier-based supersonic bomber that entered service for the U.S. Navy in 1961. Capable of attaining speeds of Mach 2 and carrying nuclear payloads, the Vigilante was a heavy attack aircraft that made use of an unusual delivery system. The A-5 saw extensive use in the Vietnam War, however in an entirely different role, and had a relatively brief career that was cut short in part by advances it helped introduce. Many feel that the late 1940s and early 1950s were the golden age of aircraft development. The dawn of the jet age inspired aircraft manufacturers to design and hopefully produce new aircraft that could take advantage of the incredible amount of changes that were going on in the post-World War II era. It was a time of unparalleled experimentation in aircraft development, with many fascinating designs and breakthroughs in the commercial and military sectors. The Korean War ushered in the combat era of the jet age which led both the Air Force and Navy to require increasingly larger and faster aircraft. This was true of not only fighters, but bombers as well. It was during this time that the Navy became interested in a nuclear-capable medium bomber that could operate out of carriers, which led both North American Aviation and Douglas to work on some designs. Initially, it appeared that North American had the advantage, as they had just produced the AJ Savage, a carrier-based medium bomber that had two radial piston engines along with a J-33 turbojet engine. The AJ Savage could carry atomic bombs and would also ultimately serve in reconnaissance and tanker roles during its service life. Because of this, North Americans sought to make an improved version of the Savage, which was designated as the XA-2J Super Savage. The Super Savage was powered by two Allison T-40 turboprops which unfortunately proved to be unreliable and extended the development schedule of the program. Eventually, the XA-2J lost out to the Douglas A-3 Sky Warrior, which was jet-powered and superior in every way as compared to the Super Savage. The A-3 procurement was North American's wake-up call that a clean sheet design was needed. As a result, the engineers at North American put everything they had into their next aircraft and set out to produce a nuclear-armed Mach 2 bomber that could operate off of the carriers of the time. The resulting aircraft became known as the A-5 Vigilante, an aircraft of many firsts. The Vigilante was the first supersonic bomber to equip fully variable wedge-type side air intakes, the first to be designed with a slim forward fuselage, made use of one of the first fly-by-wire systems on an operational aircraft, and implemented an early version of a digital computer. The Vigilante was powered by two General Electric J-79s, the same engines that would be used on iconic aircraft such as the B-58 Hustler, the F-104 Starfighter, and of course, the F-4 Phantom. It's not difficult to see that with all these advanced features and the aircraft size, the Vigilante was easiest, the heaviest, and most complex carrier aircraft to fly up until that point in time. Initially, the A-5 was designed as a concept aircraft privately by North American and sent over to the U.S. Navy as the North American General Purpose Attack Weapon, or NAGPA. Upon reviewing this design and following some modifications, the Navy decided to move forward with procurement of the aircraft. An initial design contract was issued to North American in 1955. And in 1958, just three years later, a prototype Vigilante flew its maiden flight from Columbus, Ohio. Interestingly, the Vigilante was selected to replace the Douglas A-3 Sky Warrior in the strategic nuclear attack role. The A-5 also featured an unorthodox internal linear bomb bay that would store nuclear weapons and fuel tanks in a store's train. Essentially, a center cylinder located between the two engines would stack a Mark 28 nuclear weapon with a couple of disposable fuel tanks. The tail cone would be removed during a bombing run and a drogue chute would pull out the fuel tanks and bomb to deliver the payload. During the early 1960s, North American incorporated several improvements into the A-5, which was designated the A-5B. The B version featured a fuselage with a humpback that accommodated additional fuel. Along with this, the wings were redesigned to make use of enlarged trailing edge flaps and fully blown flaps. This, coupled with the added ability to carry four external drop tanks, essentially doubled the bomber's range. 
However, development was suddenly halted after only six A5Bs were produced. It turns out that the Navy's strategic focus had shifted to nuclear-armed submarines, and as a result, carrier-based manned bombers were deprioritized. It seemed that the A-5 was doomed to becoming a footnote in history. Just like the A-5 Vigilante would go on to find a new role and title for its missions, you too can add a title for you or a loved one. With established titles, you can become a Lord in Scotland. You see, in Scotland, landowners are referred to as Lords or Ladies. Established titles have set it up so that you can buy as little as one square foot of land and provides you with a unique plot number with which you can look up the exact location of your land, and then they send you a proclamation that makes you an official lord. This makes perhaps one of the best and unique gifts I've ever seen. You can officially make yourself or loved one a fancy lord or lady. Additionally, with every order, established titles plants a tree to help preserve the woodlands of Scotland. On top of this, established titles told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our own little channel named Kingdom. It makes an amazing last minute gift. Established titles is actually running a massive Father's Day sale. Plus, if you use the code PILOT, you'll get an additional 10% off. Go to establishedtitles.com pilot to get your gifts now and support this channel. And now, back to the Vigilante. Instead of delivering nuclear bombs, the Vigilante would perform a less strategic but equally important role. It would take photos and gather intel as a reconnaissance platform. The RA-5C was a designation for the reconnaissance version of the Vigilante and ultimately ended up being the majority configuration produced for this iconic aircraft. Along with a slightly greater wing area, the RA-5C made use of a fuselage canoe-shaped fairing that housed a multi-sensor reconnaissance pack. This kit contained the ADP-7 side-looking airborne radar or SLAR, an AAS-21 infrared line scanner, improved electronic countermeasures for defense, and of course, camera packs. Additionally, for Electronic Signals Intelligence or ELINT gathering, the AN-ALQ-61 system could be carried. Without a doubt, the avionics on board the Vigilante were state-of-the-art. Along with the aforementioned early fly-by-wire system which ran on a digital computer, the AN-ASB-12 NAV attack system incorporated a Pilot's Projected Display Indicator, or PPDI, what we would refer to today as a heads-up display or HUD. Along with this, additional systems included a radar-equipped inertial navigation system, or RAINS, a multi-mode radar, and a closed circuit television camera under the nose. All of these systems were operated by the previously mentioned digital computer, which was known as the Versatile Digital Analyzer or VERDAN. The aircraft was operated by a crew of two, initially a Pilot and Bombardier Navigator or BN, and later by a Pilot and Reconnaissance Attack Navigator or RAN. The size, speed, and range that the RA-5C delivered made it an invaluable reconnaissance platform. For just over a year, the Vigilante was actually known as the A3J-1. It was under this designation that the Vigilante entered service in June of 1961 with Heavy Attack Squadron 3 or VAH-3 at Naval Air Station Sanford in Florida. The Vigilante replaced the A3 Sky Warrior in the strategic nuclear strike role. In 1962, as part of the Tri-Services designation plan, the Vigilante was redesignated the A5. During its early years of service, the Vigilante faced many teething problems due to its advanced systems, which featured technology that was in its infancy. And while most of these initial issues were resolved, the aircraft remained a maintenance-intensive platform throughout its service life. As mentioned previously, the A-5's role as a bomber was short-lived. In 1963, procurement of the A-5 was halted, and the type was converted to the fast reconnaissance role as RA-5Cs. Ultimately, a total of 10 RA-5C squadrons would be established and would use the designation RVAH to denote Vigilante Fast Recon Squadrons. RVAH-3 was a stateside training squadron which trained flight crews, maintenance, and support personnel. The remaining nine squadrons would routinely deploy aboard the carriers Saratoga, Ranger, Forrestal, Independence, Constellation, Kitty Hawk, America, John F. Kennedy, the Enterprise, and eventually even some of the Nimitz-class carriers. During the Vietnam War, 8 of 10 RA-5C Vigilante squadrons would see extensive service, starting in 1964. 
tasked with flying dangerous medium-level post-strike reconnaissance missions, a total of 18 RA-5Cs were lost in combat. One to a MiG-21, three to surface-to-air missiles or SAMs, and 11 to anti-aircraft fire. An additional nine vigilantes were lost due to operational accidents while serving with Task Force 77. As a result of these losses, production briefly resumed from 1968 to 1970, which yielded 36 additional airframes as attrition replacements. The RA-5C's vigilante's home base of Sanford was closed in 1968, and Reconnaissance Attack Wing 1 was moved to Turner Air Force Base in Albany, Georgia, where it became part of a Strategic Air Command or SAC Wing. When the SAC Wing was inactivated, the base was transferred from the Air Force to the Navy and renamed Naval Air Station Albany. In 1974, the base was closed as part of the post-Vietnam force reduction, and all our A5C units were transferred to Naval Air Station Key West in Florida. At the same time, disestablishment of RVAH squadrons was underway, with RVAH-7 being the last vigilante squadron. The vigilante's final deployment was on the USS Ranger in 1979, and the last vigilante flight took place on 20 November 1979, when an RA-5C departed Naval Air Station Key West. Following this, Reconnaissance Attack Wing 1 was disestablished at NAS Key West in January of 1980. It was the end of the RA-5C era. On 13 December 1960, while it was still known as the A3J Vigilante, Navy Pilot Commander Leroy A. Heath, along with Bombardier Navigator Lieutenant Larry Monroe, set a world altitude record of 91,450.8 feet in a vigilante that was carrying a 1,000 kilogram payload. This incredible altitude was reached by flying the vigilante to a speed of Mach 2.1 and then pulling up to create a ballistic trajectory that took the aircraft above an altitude at which the wings could no longer provide lift or control. In this ultra-thin atmosphere, the engines flamed out and the aircraft rolled onto its back. This rolling action had already been experienced in previous flights, so Commander Heath simply released the controls and the aircraft regained control naturally as it descended back into the thicker air of the lower atmosphere. This attempt beat the previous record by over 4 miles and stood for more than 13 years. The A-5 and RA-5 Vigilante had a relatively short service life. The aircraft's high maintenance requirements and large size on precious carrier flight decks somewhat sealed its fate. And as for the aircraft it was intended to replace, the A-3 Sky Warrior's career not only wasn't ended by the A-5, it outlived it. The A-3 was easier to maintain and also served many additional roles, aside from reconnaissance such as aerial refueling tanker, electronic warfare platform, and even executive transport. In the carrier reconnaissance role, the smaller and less expensive RF-8 Crusader took the place of the Vigilante. RF-8s had the added advantage of being able to operate out of smaller carriers, increasing their availability to the overall fleet. VFP-62 and VFP-63 had been operating photo crusaders since the early 1960s. The Marines would make use of the RF-4B Phantom, which operated their sole reconnaissance unit VMFP-3. By 1980, the recon mission had been transferred to the legendary F-14 Tomcat, which could carry the Multi-Sensor Tactical Airborne Reconnaissance Pod System, or TARPS. This pod essentially eliminated the need for a dedicated reconnaissance aircraft, as technically, any Tomcat could equip the pod and fly a reconnaissance mission. Today, the reconnaissance role is handled by the F-A-18 Super Hornet. Interestingly, both the F-14 and Super Hornet evolved into the same 60,000 pound plus weight class as a Vigilante. The A-5 Vigilante was an ambitious design that incorporated many advanced features and set the groundwork for subsequent airframes that would follow it. Not as famous as contemporary aircraft such as the Phantom or Intruder, the Vigilante played an invaluable role as a reconnaissance platform. However, it just simply may have been too much airplane for the time. Ironically, its speed and range would be very useful in today's geopolitical climate. What do you think? Was the Vigilante too advanced for its time? Is it an underrated aircraft? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and now you know.